Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with Two Humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And the title of this episode is The 411 on 1 and 2, or The Lowdown on Sit Downs. <laughs> so, so John, obviously, obviously, we're talking about what uh, medical professionals and scientists call uh, pooping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And all that that entails. And, you know, for those audience members out there who are like, really, what does this have to do? I'm like, what is more human right. than, right. Uh, than pooping? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's so core to everything. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's the first two things that a zygote develops are a mouth and an anus. <laughs> yeah. That's, the, that's, that's, the, that's our first two things. We're going way back. We're, yeah. we're going way back on this. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's something we all do. And I think, uh, but there's still a lot of anxieties about it. Yeah. And, oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> especially about uh, pooping in public. I think a yes. lot of people have. <laughs> so. Well, and it's seen as it's just riddled with with messages. Yeah. Too. I mean, uh, yeah, it's the worst. Yeah. So how I mean, before we got to get it out before we begin this uh, conversation. But how about you? Do you have how do you feel? it? What's your gut reaction on it? I, I, I poop great. <laughs> I don't have any problems. I have so many friends where they, I have uh, one friend in particular I'm thinking about, not you. Yeah. Uh, for <laughs> uh, who, I swear to God, he talks about pooping all the time, his poops and what's going really? on with them. I mean, it's, and maybe as I'm getting older, more and more people yeah. are. And now I'm thinking yeah. of another friend too who talks about pooping. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. He's got to just... take Metamucil. He's got this oh, whole God. thing. He, I feel for the guy. Hmm. You know, yeah. I really do. But, you know. How does it uh, come up? Does it come up naturally in conversation? Or does he call he you up? He seems to like... bring it up. You know, <laughs> it's, just like, it's like what's on his mind. Oh, and, it, and when he has yeah. a good one, you know. I, I don't know, really? man. Yeah. Did he yeah, text you? I'm... Text you about it? or? <laughs> <laughs> No, fortunately, it hasn't come that far, but it feels yeah. like I'm, I'm, I mean, there's a part of me that just wants to say, please, can we yeah. talk about, yeah, but don't, I don't want to hear about that. Right. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> do you, uh, do you, how do you, how are you about pooping in public, like public bathrooms? I'm okay. I'm, I'm pretty okay. I just got back from touring in, in Europe. So I was pooping yeah. in a lot of strange environments. <laughs> when I um, travel, when I fly, it's, yeah. uh, it is, it, it, I, I noticed that I, sometimes it takes me a couple of days, you know, I can right, go, right. But, um, but I was just in Germany and, uh, <laughs> they have these, the shelf, I should have taken a picture. They have like a shelf yeah. in the toilet. You know what I'm talking about? No, no. Because I, I know you spent time in France, but it's like a, <laughs> it's like a shelf down there. And then when you right. flush, the flushing water flushes it off of the shelf into the uh, drain, which is strange. And my friend, yeah. my friend Susan says that it, you know that's because the, the they want to check it out. You know the the, <laughs> the Germans like to see what they're doing. Um, but were you, yeah. were you sitting down or were you squatting at this point? Uh, just sitting down. It was all, yeah. you know, okay. regular on that account. Yeah. I was yeah. in a train station <laughs> and had to use the restroom, right. which was fine because you pay like a, a Euro to get in there and yeah. it's immaculate. I mean, it's just like, you can't believe it. So was there an attendant, so, attendant in there? No, like, no cleaning. attendant, but everything <laughs> was just so clean. You can't imagine. Right. And I used the the toilet. I I, I yeah. had to poop, and yeah. I flushed the toilet. Yeah, and the seat rotated because there was a little arm on it that cleaned yeah. the top of the seat really? every time it was used. Wow! The whole seat went mm, yeah, and and somehow yeah. Uh, was cleaned. It's crazy. Crazy. Are you are you the type of person that tries not to sit down on the public toilet seat, or do you sit down? On no, the I, I. I mean, look, if there, you know, if it's a disgust, I, I, if there's a cowboy hat available, yeah, 
yeah. I'll definitely put it down. <laughs> uh, but if not, you know, I don't, I'm not going to try to hover. I'm not that, no, right. I'm not that germ. Of, I mean, I, you know, I recognize that it's, but uh, I, I can, I'm trying to think of, I mean, if it's, if it's something that's just too disgusting, I just won't yeah. use it. You know, I'm not going to. You know yeah. what, what the irony of it is? It's the people who are afraid of sitting on it who don't sit on it and then leave a mess on it. That's you know what I mean? True. That is true. <laughs> so they've they're, created their worst nightmare. They're created the snake eats its own tail. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. That And that can be extrapolated into a lot yeah. of the problems. Yeah. The people who are most worried about things. I mean, you look at the, you know, the people who are most worried about uh, sexual activity are the ones that later get busted. Right. I'm, t- I'm thinking of politicians. Yeah. They're the ones who later get busted for doing the exact things that they're worried about. Right. How, mm-hmm. how do you feel about, like, if you go over to somebody's house for dinner, where you go into the bathroom, like, if I got to go in, I got to, I got to poop. poop. Yeah. Oh God. I mean, no, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Nobody, I would do that. I don't even know. If, I mean, I guess if I had to, yeah, I, I don't know. I, How do you, I, do you think I, that I that's take care of business? I don't get myself in situations <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, I I had a guy. We had called some people out to come uh, spray for weeds at our at our place. You're kidding. The guy, the weed killer, went in. And- not not him. He comes and knocks on the door, and he goes, "Is it okay if my son comes in and uses your bathroom?" Oh my god! So he had like a son who was about eleven or twelve. And he just, oh boy. And what do you say if they're knocking on, they're working on your house? He's like, yeah. my son come in. I'm like, well, yeah, it seems yeah. a little odd, but okay. Yeah, understood. And I thought he'd be in there for like, you know, a few minutes. Like yeah, take going, a pee. Take a pee. He was in there for like 20 minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And I hate to be uptight, but I was like, really, dude? This is like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You had to do it at my house. Right, um, right. My son, uh, uh, well, Jesus, I probably can't tell this. But anyway, he <laughs> called me uh, when he had an, a situation <laughs> that arose. And I was so touched by it. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, of all, it's the <clears throat> worst position to be in. Right. And right. he called me. Uh, have you ever, have you ever uh, flooded a toilet? That's the worst. <laughs> oh, no, you know, if you see. At your and own that, house or somebody else's house? And because it's always else. bad. Yeah. yeah. No. It's at no. your house. That's, you know, it's terrible. But yeah. It's, yeah. I'm talking about somebody else's. That horrible feeling where the water is just coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, we were, I was down at the uh, Blue Bayou Motel in Branson, Missouri one time. Oh, boy. And there, there was this really big, like, uh, just like, like country guy working behind the counter when I checked in and uh, I go to the bathroom, like right when he didn't like me already, I could tell he didn't like me. I go to the bathroom right when I get in the room because I was like, okay, I got to go. Immediately yeah. clogged there. <laughs> Immediately no. clogged. Yeah. So I well, I guarantee you're not yeah. the first person to clog a toilet at the Blue Bayou <laughs> Motel outside of Branson. You stay at a lot of crazy. It, it, yeah. You, you, yeah. You, you you like a lot. You like yourself an odd motel. <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I tell you, but to come back down like within five minutes of checking in and be and like, for a plunger. Do you have a plunger back? Oh, he was, just, he was fuming. He wanted he, to kill me. He wanted yeah. to kill me. But you and know then, how to use a plumber. You took care of business, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Everything worked out. But but you know that walk back to your room when you're carrying the plunger. Is awesome. <laughs> it's like everybody, every it was one of those where you have to go outside, you know, to get into you your to get in. Room. Yeah, yeah. And so everybody's like watching me walk across the parking lot with this plunger. <laughs> oh Jesus! There goes trouble. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, and then uh, one time, Mary and I were staying at a like an old hotel in Blois, France. B-L-O-I-S. See what I mean yeah. about him and hotels, everybody? <laughs> you think these are just two examples? They're yeah, not. Yeah. Uh, but it was like this old grand hotel from the late 1800s. But it had been on, you know, on or had fallen on hard times. Yeah. And so we were like the only people. It was it was this enormous hotel. Oh my God. And we were like the only people in there. And, oh Jesus. And and every once in a while you would hear a door open or close like way off in the distance. You know, it was one of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and we would be the only people eating at, you know mm-hmm. for breakfast we'd be the only ones in there god it's like the shining or something yeah yeah or like barton fink remember yeah. Barton fink? Yeah. <laughs> like fewer people and uh we ran out of toilet paper oh boy and so i was like well i'll just go down you know the, the place was run by this husband and wife and i was like mm-hmm. well i'll just go down and and ask at the front desk if I can get some toilet paper. Yeah, of course. And when the uh, when the elevator door opened, they were all sitting out, the husband, wife, and their son were all sitting out in the lobby. Like they used the hotel like their house. So That's they were all like out just- the living room. Yeah. So they were out there watching TV, reading the paper. And they they kind of look up as I come out. And, you know, I, I say in French, like, uh, do you have any toilet paper? <laughs> just so shocked so oh. shocked by it and then they were like well yeah 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 go back to the room and we'll bring you some so i had to go back to the room and then wait for 20 minutes 20 30 minutes before they came up and then there was like a little tap at the door and they gave me like two little you know tiny bricks of of toilet paper up there Jesus. So one of them ran down to the store. Jesus. I told you, you shut up. No, you shut up. <laughs> it's like we're the only people in there. You know, it's like it's the, you can make certain that we have some toilet paper in there. Maybe they just went through rooms until they found some toilet paper. It took them a while. <laughs> yeah, the, no, not the, the stuff- third floor. We're out on the third floor. It took them a while to get it back in the pack. So it like was fresh. <laughs> Uh, that was also uh, the, that same stay in Blois where uh, I had to go get tampons <laughs> for oh, Mary boy. because uh, uh, she didn't speak French. And so she yeah. sent me down. Same thing. I walked in and you know how yeah. in Europe they all wear lab coats and yes. you know, they have like a clipboard at the yeah. pharmacist. And she came up like, yeah, can I help you, sir? You know, I was like, uh, yes, est-ce que vous avez des, des tampons? <laughs> she, was like, <laughs> she was like, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. That's sweet. Hmm. Uh, the other thing, I went through a period where uh, every time I went in to take a poo in public, uh, somebody invariably would come in and try the door. <laughs> try to try. <laughs> it, it was without fail. It was yeah. a period of a, a few years. That's good luck. We should have taken you to Vegas. <laughs> it was like that... roulette. And, yeah. and I could be the only person sitting down in a row of, you know, stalls. But they come and, to you. And I'd hear the person come in and come walking <laughs> down the row and, and then start. <clears throat> that's, the- that's good luck. That's reverse <laughs> good luck. It's not bad luck. It's reverse good luck. We should have taken you to Vegas and then whatever number yeah. you pick, yeah. we pick the opposite. <laughs> and we would have won. Uh, uh, during that same period when that would happen, you know, because they, they jiggle the door and I'd have to be like, I, I'm in here. You yeah. Know, like they somebody's in here. <laughs> yeah. so, Jesus. I went camping with my brother, uh, David, up in northern Wisconsin. And it was, we weren't staying at a campsite. It's just one of those undeveloped camping areas. Oh, and boy. we're out in the middle of nowhere. Well, we there was one toilet, pit toilet, that was about three quarters of a mile from where we were camping. So I was like, I got to go. I'm going to walk down there. So I walked all the way down to the pit toilet. I sit down and off in the distance, I hear an engine coming. Like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? it's like, mm, it's getting louder. <laughs> and then uh, I, I hear like, you know, wheels on gravel. Like, oh, shit, no. like it's coming up. And I'm like. You got to be yeah. fucking kidding me. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm sitting in there in the middle of nowhere. We're the Ugh. only ones camping there. A truck, I hear him pull up outside. <laughs> I hear the door slam. <laughs> foot, foot's foot's on the gravel. And then like, chuk, 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 trying to get in. <laughs> and I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And I have to say like, I'm in here. And he's like, and, oh, okay, sorry. And then I and, hear him go back, get back in his truck and drive off. He drove. That shocks me. Why not? Why <laughs> not? Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people hook up in public bathrooms. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like a, 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 a sort of a, a gay yeah. uh, man. Man, a lot of. Yeah. A lot, I yeah. have a few friends who are like, "Yeah, you know." Like, yeah. really? Wow. Well, this guy. If that was it, he drove a long way. Yeah. <laughs> to come check it out. I maybe mean, if he, that... maybe he looked down and saw your ankles and was like, "No." <laughs> 
<laughs> now I'm a little, now I feel bad. <laughs> now my feelings are hurt. Uh, so anyway, John, I thought today we could talk about pooing, of course. And yeah. we've already been talking about cooing, pooing. And for a couple of reasons, uh, first of all, in her book, The Porcelain God, A Social History of the Toilet, uh, Julie Horan says that some people believe that civilization began with the first toilet. Hmm. Not I written language. St- yeah. I believe that. Well, what a shelter. <laughs> I mean, you got to have shelter first. But yeah. as soon as yeah. you've got shelter, you got to, you know, take care of business. Right. Well, she says that, you know, waste control allowed people to quit wandering the earth. Interesting. That they were able to, to finally control it, the situation to where they could could stop right trying to get away from their can't do that (laughs) then you just hang out for a while and move on right right yeah right once the the poo gets so bad yeah uh and secondly uh i don't think people realize how important waste disposal and sanitation is to our lives not me (laughs) i i know it's extremely Hmm. important i can't imagine it i'm constantly thinking about it i i I was thinking the other day i was just saying this to somebody can you imagine because i was in berlin which reminded me of new york city and i was thinking about new york city and just imagine the amount of just fingernail clippings, okay? <laughs> just fingernail clippings. Yeah. Getting those fingernail clippings of all of those New Yorkers off that oh. island every oh. single day. Oh, Jesus. And that's God. just fingernail clippings. <laughs> That'd be awful. It'd be it's awful amazing. to see it with like a- it, re- it truly <clears throat> is amazing. Like a uh, front end loader or something, just with like yeah, <laughs> fingernails. Mm-hmm. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and then also, you know, it was relatively recent uh, invention that we finally had like indoor plumbing. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that that yeah. people had no indoor plumbing in some yeah, places well, in the world. Cowboy days and the outhouse, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, I remember one time, one Christmas, I was spending it with uh, my wife at the time with her family. And it was Christmas Eve and a pipe burst. Oh, boy. And and if you think Christmas is already, like, stressful for people. Like, when you realize, because we all realize there's no way we're getting a plumber out on Christmas Eve or Christmas. (laughs) So it was going to be two or three days without a toilet. And we suddenly, we were on edge. Everybody yeah. was on edge. Yeah. Like, it becomes a it becomes the focus of attention. Yeah. Because, yeah. And and if a pipe, if a sewage line breaks in a house, it's it there's you know, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Once you got poo problems, <laughs> everything else yeah. is is less important. There there is one thing and one thing only that right. must be right. solved. Yeah, we were opening gifts. You know, you try to try to be happy when you're opening gifts, mm. and it was like everybody was like, "Oh God!" You could just see it on their face of like, "Please don't make me have to go." Just everybody, you know, just kind of haggard, you know. Mm. And then also remember during the pandemic, uh, remember what everybody was was hoarding. Everybody was afraid yes. of, of losing was toilet paper. Yes. You yes, know? yes, yes. Did you panic? I didn't panic. I didn't panic. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'll find something out back there. <laughs> See, that's what I felt. <laughs> I felt like you know, I, I, you know, maybe I could go entertain for my supply yeah. during a zombie yeah. apocalypse. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but but remember, in all the apocalyptic movies, like Mad Max and everything, everybody's always like, "Oh, people will be fighting over water. Mm-hmm. People will be fighting over oil or gas." It was you toilet think- paper. It's it toilet paper. <laughs> Yes, you get down to it. You ever run out of toilet paper in your house and use something else? Uh, I have before, not recently. What, but what did you go time. with? What did you? What was the backup plan? Oh well, you always go with like coffee filters. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> coffee yeah. filters. Yeah, yeah. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's start at the beginning. What happens? Uh, when we poo. Mm-hmm. And uh, on their website, the Cleveland Clinic says, the food you eat takes an incredible journey through your <laughs> body. From the top, your mouth, to the bottom, your anus. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of, uh, I like how they say an incredible journey. It kind of sounds like an incredible journey. I love that. <laughs> it's like Lord of the Rings, you know. Yeah. <laughs> It, which basically, I, let's be honest, the third movie was basically from a mouth to an anus. <laughs> I was so exhausted by that time. And I really? love that shit. But yeah, by the third yeah. movie, I'm like, my God. Did if you I see, him? see them cresting <laughs> one more mountain. Yeah, remember you? it was almost over and they was like, oh yeah, we we're, it's going to start again. One more battle. One more battle. <clears throat> so yeah. many battles. Ugh. Uh, but anyway, along the way, the beneficial parts of your food are absorbed, giving you energy and nutrients. It really is incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, so. It's so amazing that we just eat this shit and that makes us live. It's so yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Uh, and the organs in your gastrointestinal tract are the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and the anus. Of course. <laughs> Puckered starfish. <laughs> And the uh, the Cleveland Clinic says that the stool is the waste that's left over after your food and liquids have passed through the colon. Ah, so that's why it's taken okay. out everything. That's just kind of the product that's yeah. left. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, the stool is stored in the sigmund or the sigmoid or S-shaped colon until a, quote, mass movement, unquote, empties it into the rectum once or twice a day. How Once often? or twice a day? Yeah. That's not me. How often do you go? How Once often a day. Once a day. Really? Right on schedule. <laughs> morning or afternoon? Morning. Or morning. Really? Yep. Yeah. yeah. See, my schedule's all off because of working overtime and everything. Yeah. So. Well, you've been put through a lot of stress. <laughs> you also drink a lot of coffee, which I'm yeah, sure. I, do. I, do. <laughs> I mean, I drink a lot of coffee, but you drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm not drinking coffee now, but I usually right up until I go to sleep, I'm swilling coffee. I can't believe that you can do it till you go to sleep. <clears throat> That's the craziest yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, and then they say it normally takes about 36 hours for stool to get through the colon. Wow. So 36 wow. hours that it's that incredible journey. <laughs> a day and a half just to work from the through the colon. <clears throat> right. Right. Interesting. And then when the sigmoid colon is full of stool, it empties into the rectum. Mm -hmm, it sure okay. does. <laughs> and the rectum is an eight inch chamber that connects the colon to the anus. Yes. And it's the thing that it, that's the, the thing that pushes it out. Right. That's the right, muscles right. around the rectum. Because the rectum, yeah, the rectum's job is to receive stool from the colon and then let you know there is stool to be evacuated or pooped out <laughs> yeah, and to hold the stool until evacuation happens. So like, See, that's what I would argue is the centerpiece of civilization is the ability to hold it. Yeah. Because yeah. if we weren't the kind of animals that could hold it, forget about it. I, I, I don't, I don't think we'd be where we are. <laughs> I suppose there was a time, but can you imagine now if it like just out Going yeah. shopping or something out yeah. of the mall and just people like yeah, like a just like a dog. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I mean, just thank God we evolved into yeah. that we could hold it. Yeah. Like a, like you have a little poop bag for yourself. You, know oh, I mean? you, you do don't it, have you. diapers. Oh yeah. yeah. God. Uh and the anus is a two inch long canal that is made up of the pelvic floor muscles and the two anal sphincters. The internal and external. Oh, so oh, okay. So hemorrhoids is when the internal kind of comes out a little bit, right? I think so. Yeah. Something. I've never, been, I've never had that issue. Thank God. That's but they say, horrid. They say the internal sphincter is always tight, uh, mm. except when stool enters the rectum, and uh, this keeps up your your continence so that you mm. can control control when you go. Wow. And then the external sphincter is the one that you know. When you're ready to go, uh, it's the one that that opens up and <laughs> bids the farewell. Up. You know, In interesting. Uh, wow. Yeah. And as you've mentioned already, uh, our ancestors have been performing this operation every day for the last at least seven million years, probably even more than that. When we were just single cell, single cell organisms. Yeah, because if <clears> you <throat> can't it, it get rid of the waste. 
you've got all kinds of problems. You, you, yeah, you know, yeah. And you know, and that's, you know, when people become septic or in, in you know, those issues, it's like, yeah, it, yeah. It, that's death, man. <laughs> yeah. It's that, it has bacteria in it. Yeah. It has waste products, toxins. Yeah. Yeah. God. Um, but the, the question has always been, what do you do with the waste once it comes out? Because right. as soon as it comes out, nobody wants to spend time with it. No. If, even no. prehistorically, people wanted to get away from it. And that's nope. why they kept moving. That's what happened. We've talked about this hmm. Mount Everest. Yeah. People yeah. who spend all this training and time and everything to get up on top of a Mount Everest. And what's up on top of Mount Everest? Empty uh, uh, yeah. oxygen yeah. tanks, dead people, and yeah. poo. But you did it. You but did it, baby. Did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Why did you, got you do a photograph? It? Because, it's, because it's there. Well, guess what's yeah. there? Yeah. And it's not only you, it's it's like another 150 people that are all trying to get to the get their photograph on the top yeah. of whatever it's. And yeah. they all poo and the poo never yeah. goes away, ever. Uh so prehistorically too, you know, there's uh, if you're an archaeologist and we've discussed it before, there's something called a coprolite, which is like a petrified or desiccated or dried poo. Yes, uh, that somebody has left, most likely in a cave. And as an archaeologist, to get that coprolite, there, there's a lot of information you can tell from it. Like you can tell what they were eating, you can tell their health. Mm -hmm. um, but why it, did it, he poo in the cave? Don't poo in the cave. <laughs> he didn't want to go out. It was too yeah. dangerous out there. That idiot who pooed in the cave, well, thank <laughs> God for him. But Jesus, if I was living with him, I'd be like, you had to do it in the cave? Yeah. Can you go outside? Go outside. <laughs> There's Jesus. nobody around for miles. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to draw something on the wall here, <laughs> and you're pooping in here. You look over, you're working on your uh, your mammoth or something. You look yeah. over, and I'm I'm just pooping over there. <laughs> Never, I'm ever. just thinking. I'm thinking about what I'm going to draw. <laughs> uh, and also, so you know, prehistoric turds can be uh, can be a gold mine for archaeologists. Yeah, and you got for, that right. And for example, uh, Julie Horan notes that uh, excavations in York, England, in 1972 discovered a 1,000 year old turd left by a Viking. Whoa! <laughs> but, now Vikings, Vikings. I'm guessing would a big turd. You know, I would think so. And she yeah. says that it was found underneath the present location of Lloyd's Bank, and it became known as the Lloyd's Bank turd, and it was insured for thirty four thousand dollars. Oh, <laughs> wow! And uh, you know, probably like we've said before. It, for millions of years, you would just poop and you just keep moving. You just uh -huh. move away from it. Yep, yep. But but then about ten thousand years ago, when we you know developed agriculture, yeah, and now we're, to, now we're we're working on <clears throat> land. We're getting our our little uh, homestead all set up. Right, we're right. Only one problem: <laughs> you can't move away from your poop. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You have to stay there to watch the animals and you have to stay there yeah. to watch watch the the food or watch the the plants. Yeah. Uh so what most people probably did back then was use a cesspit. You know, you just dig a hole. <laughs> just everybody goes and and dumps all of their their poo in oh, the cesspit. God. And, I mean, I've done that camping hmm. for just a yeah. couple of days and it's like Jesus. <laughs> you know? Well, I can't wait to get home. Do you, have you ever gone camping without like a like a pit toilet or anything where you yeah, actually you yeah. have to dig the hole? I've or? done yeah, I've done oh. the dig the whole thing, and it's just it's not. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, yeah. How do you? I, I don't always, wanna... I don't like squatting. I'm always afraid yeah. I'm going to get something on my pants. I agree. Know? The whole operation <laughs> is just unpleasant. <laughs> Whoever invented this toilet seat's a goddamn genius. Yeah. <laughs> do you? Uh, do you take all your pants completely off when you go out there? <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I do the pants off, rotate one leg. Yeah. So I get one leg free, then yeah. you know, and then I rotate the pants and the underwear away from the hole, yeah. do my business, <laughs> and then redress. <laughs> but it's not easy. You got an ivy out there, you got yeah. bugs yeah. and birds and Jesus, I agree. the whole thing. I agree. I, I hate it.
I'm like an animal. Even in the city, I'm like an animal when I go there. I, I feel vulnerable when I'm going to the rest. So I always like try to go find the one bathroom in, you know, a five block area that has nobody in it. And they always find you. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading too that on a ship, they used to put the the toilets or the privies up on the front of the ship. Because if you think about it, the air is coming, blowing into the sails oh. from behind. But then you got to see the turds float by. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but if not, it would all be blowing back. It, it would be blowing on you. Like if you right. put the toilet in the right. back. So they put it on the head of the ship, which uh-huh. became known as the head. Oh. And, oh. and then, but they said still, it, like if you had a gust of wind come up or something yeah. from a wave, it could yeah. throw all of that on you while you were using the head. Oh, there. boy. So a lot of people would on ships... Uh, old sailing ships would strip completely down <laughs> to go use the bathroom. Oh, just jump in the ocean and do it? Well, no, you would be up on the ship, you know, oh, you'd be see. up on the, yeah, off oh, the deck God. or whatever. Oh my yeah. God. You just bend over. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and Julie Horan notes that by the 3000s BC, uh, cities and villages in Mesopot- Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley had cesspits and sewer systems. Sewer systems. Yeah, she uh, she notes uh, she notes that a, a city called Habuba Kabir, a Mesopotamian city in what is now Syria, uh, they were using pipes to carry off wastewater by 3300 BC. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Pipes. What did they make it of? Clay, I guess. Right. Probably clay. Yeah. 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 Jesus. And then in the third millennium BC, Sargon the first, uh, the ruler he was of the a super- genius, God Sargon. <laughs> but boy the second, his son, ugh, what a loser. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it always the way? Isn't yeah. it always the way? Yeah. Uh he was the ruler of the Sumerians, and at his palace he had six toilets. Wow. Inside. That's inside, yeah. And wow. it was just basically a sitting spot over a cesspit. <laughs> right. Oh, God. Yeah. So what did they throw <clears throat> down there to keep it for? Oh, my God. Yeah. So, it, it, I mean, it was an improvement that you didn't have to go outside. They were yeah. probably like, wow, Sargon's place. <laughs> Check it out. It's yeah. Like six, a six holer in there or something. You know? That be, better be a <laughs> long power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the Minoan palace at Knossos on the uh, island of Crete uh, was built between 1900 and 1500 BC, had 1400 rooms and had flush toilets. What? They had like conical uh, terracotta pipes that would channel water from a cistern on the roof. And they used that to flush that away. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 1500 <laughs> BC. Yeah. Jesus. And, and, uh, and yet cowboys were still doing it in our houses <laughs> in 1800, you know, AD. I know. Like, like there's still, like, you go, camping, you go camping or something. There's still, like, uh, we went camping up in Colorado one time and we made the mistake of renting a, um, you know, how they do the air streams and you can stay yeah. in an airstream. Yeah. But we were at the end of the season. So they hadn't emptied it all oh. it in months and months and months. Oh, and, and the toilet was black. And I'm like, I'm like really, really? Oh. Yeah, don't ever awful. rent those things. Better to bring a tent. <laughs> it's your tent, your sleeping bag. God yeah. knows what happens inside those RVs, those oh. rental RVs. Oh. Yeah. Unless they advertise on our show, and then I'm pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll definitely get a good review if you advertise with it. That's them. right. Uh, and for the ancient Jews, about 3,500 years ago, Deuteronomy 23.12 said... Deuteronomy. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I know this is your favorite. I know this is your favorite. <laughs> uh, they said, quote, you shall have a designated area outside the camp to which you shall go. With your utensils, you shall have a trowel. And when you relieve yourself outside, you shall dig a hole with it and then cover up your excrement. Yes. <laughs> now, there's a lot of things in the Old Testament that yeah. are, you know, are, are meaningless and pointless. And I'm sorry if people <clears throat> disagree yeah. with that, but I I stand strong. <clears throat> yeah. But that that piece <laughs> from Deuteronomy. 
Now that's some shit you need to know. Yeah. That's that stuff you... eternal, timeless. <laughs> yeah. That's timeless. Yeah. God's given us some information <laughs> there. Yeah. 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 Because they could do, they said, because the Lord your God travels along your camp to save you and to hand over your enemies to you. Therefore, your camp must be holy so that he may not see anything indecent among you and turn mm. away from you. So it's mm. like, go Make pick it, keep, up your poop. <laughs> yeah, keep it clean, people. Keep it clean. I like that. Yeah. Uh, in, in his book, uh, The Vanishing American Outhouse, uh, <laughs> Ronald Barlow says that the Sybarite warriors of ancient Italy are credited with the inventing the chamber pot. Oh. So just the chamber pot. Where you do it in your room and then some right. servant takes it and goes and deals with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what apparently they had. Uh, they were known for leading a life of leisure. The yes. Samurais. Oh, the Samurais. So they would, they couldn't even like if they were at a dinner or something or, you know, a feast, they didn't want to get up and leave it. So they what? would have a, have a chamber pot and then have a slave take away the chamber pot. Right there at the table? <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah. At yeah. least go into the living room hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, you know, it's good to be king, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Jesus. Uh, and Horan says that in the 6th century BC, the ancient Etruscans built a s- sewer trenches that drained into the Tiber River. Hmm. And, uh, and then what the Romans did is they expanded upon that Etruscan sewer into the Cloaca Maxima which was the main sewer of ancient Rome. Wow. And yeah, uh, that's, I mean, that's what the Romans, hmm. you always hear about the plumbing yeah. and the roads. Right. Right. And, and this and one might be sex and the crazy <laughs> debaucherous sex. Actually, there's lots of things the Romans did. I was going to say, and uh, like <laughs> killing a bunch of gladiators. And yeah. Prisoners. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and democracy. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or, or, or Republicanism. <clears throat> Small. Uh, uh, and then in Pliny, who we've talked about before, I think, who lived from 23 to 79 AD, called the Cloaca Maxima the most noteworthy achievement of Rome. I, you know what? I agree mm. with that. That's, yeah. I mean, you know, you think about that and, and you know, back to New York City or, or you know, you yeah. think about the wa- the water systems that brings in all the water and the sewage systems that gets rid yeah. of everything. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. They're still using the Cloaca Maxima, still still being used by people today. You're so, kidding. No, That's no. Amazing. That's and it was amazing. supposed to be 13 feet in diameter, and uh, it contained the statue of Cloacina, the goddess of sewers. Well, she That's probably clogged it up. I hope they laid her down because if they had her standing up there, I don't oh, think that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Guess what? There's a clog at the statue. <laughs> Just Who's going in? <laughs> Toilet paper, everything. <laughs> uh, they also would, the Romans would put uh, just jugs or vases out on the street and they were called gastra. And, uh, so the people, when you were traveling in, you know, long Roman roads, if you had to relieve yourself, you could just go in this, <laughs> just go in this jug that was out there by the side of the road. And then what would happen? Somebody, I guess somebody, some slave would have to come by and yeah. collect them all. Yeah. And they, what they would do, you'd have to collect it or they would uh, take the urine, you'd pour it out, or you'd probably go uh, sell it to Fuller's, F-U-L-L-E-R. Which are the people that are responsible for like dyeing clothes or cleaning clothes back then, and what? so they would use the urine uh, because your urine is ninety eight percent water and two percent urea, calcium, phosphate, sodium, and ammonia. So you could take the urine and turn it into ammonia. Oh my god! <laughs> and then uh, that's too much. Yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> so then they would clean clothes. With, with the urine. Pee. Yeah. 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 And I think it was uh, the Emperor Vespasian uh, who lived from like 9 to 79 AD. Or it, he actually taxed the urine that was being sold to the Fullers My and God. brought in a bunch of money for the Roman Empire that way. Wow. Wow. Um, you, ta- you tax it going in, you tax it going out. <laughs> yeah, That's brilliant. amazing. What a genius. Uh, and Jody Magnus, uh, in an article called What's the Poop on Ancient Toilets and Toilet Habits, 
Uh, she says that Roman public toilets were a place to socialize while defecating. Really? Like, yeah. How are you when you go in? Like, did you ever go in, go in with another person? To no, I want to be alone. <laughs> I don't want, but ever since I've had kids, that all went away. Really? And yeah. I thought it was just when they were little, but still, yeah. they don't give a shit about me. They're just like, dad, what's my password <laughs> on the Instagram? And I'm like, I'm going to, the, I'm pooing. Yeah. Yeah. For God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Not a moment's rest. They like open the no. door like, hey, what is it? Yeah, or they'll pound on it. They'll just interrupt yeah. me. It's just like Jesus Christ. I uh, I used to work on a bill in a building on Michigan Avenue in Chicago, and I remember that the I won't say who they worked for, but it was a, a famous company, national or mm-hmm. organization. Uh, we're on the same floor as us, and there were three stalls on our floor, and those guys would all they go in together. All to take a boot. Yeah. There's and they'd be pay- wrong with that. <laughs> That's just wrong. That's so weird. They'd be in there like just talking and passing the newspaper. Hey, g- give me the, you no, know. Ki- That's the- so <laughs> weird. That's just, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what the Romans would do. If you had a public restroom in Rome. Uh, it was all people would just go in there and all sit down and uh, well, it, the Romans and, did uh, everything together. I mean, they never did anything like they just they ate together. They went yeah. to the bath together. They take <laughs> baths together. Yeah, very uh, strange. In uh, the book Archaeology of Sanitation in Roman Italy, Anna Olga Kalaski Ostro notes that the Romans preferred to sit down for both number one and number two. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. What do you, do what, you? What, what's the hurry? Really? What's the hurry? You like- if you got it. Yeah. Then you don't splash. You don't. Yeah. I just think, yeah. it, I, I think that it, you, sh- you, if you've got time, sit down. <laughs> Even when you're peeing. <laughs> yeah. Why it's not? Definitely, definitely cleaner. I think it's, it's cleaner. cleaner. It's like, it, you yeah. can relax. You know, a, a, why? Why? I don't understand. Yeah. Why are we all standing? <laughs> Where we got to go so fast? What's right. what's the rush? Take a load off. Take no, a load off. You, yeah, take a sit relax. down. Sit yeah. down. Do you check uh, your phone? I, do you check I, your phone in there? Of course, you everybody you does. Do? Which is why you never want to touch anybody's phone ever. I but, have never done that. That now magazines. I like having a magazine, but oh, I've never I, done my. I will not use the restroom <laughs> without my phone. <laughs> Really? I don't do anything without my phone. I'm so I don't know what's happened to us. Have you uh have you ever called me when you're in the bathroom? Mm, no, I don't really yeah. call people because you know, people figure that out. You know, that's right, like right. that's like trying to watch a video while you're zooming in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Everybody knows. <Yeah. laughs> uh so anyway, uh Anna Olga Kalaski Ostro, she also says that um Roman toilets in the public restrooms had like a keyhole arrangement. So it was like a big hole that you would sit on and then kind of a, a smaller hole at the front of the toilet. Okay. Or what you were yeah. sitting on. Yeah, I get that. And the reason you did that is that Romans would, instead of toilet paper, they would use a sponge on a stick. What? To wipe themselves. You would have what? To, <laughs> yeah. They would and use, then what do you do with it? You, you would s- stick it back. There would be a channel of water in front of the row of toilets. Oh. And then you'd put it in there, clean it off, use then, it to wipe yourself. And then and then leave it for the next guy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, let me guess. They had a problem with dysentery. <laughs> yeah, that was a problem. With <laughs> no. Uh, the Japanese have got it right with the wand and everything. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you, you ever used, used one of those? Oh, No, I God. haven't. It's a life changer. Hmm. You'll just really? be like, "What? Why was I using anything yeah. else?" Yeah, yeah. It's the it's they figured it out the perfect way to to clean yourself after using the restroom. What do you do? You just sit there and let it let it do its thing, kind of like well, going to a all car wash. Versions, but yes, essentially, <laughs> yeah. there's a button and it yeah. comes out. This wand comes out and it shoots nice water at the temperature yeah. you desire. Right. Uh, and at the intensity you desire. Yeah. And then depending on, you know, the, the model, there's yeah. sometimes a blower 
that comes out and dries you. <laughs> I would it, never leave. I would never right. leave. I, I, I just stay in there all day. I had a. I worked at a place <clears throat> that had those, and it was just like, what? This is a, this is genius. <laughs> It was probably like the production of the company went down because yeah. were, all the employees were in there all day getting there. They never wanted to come out. And it also they wore it had a button to warm the toilet seat. Too. Really? Yes. Oh, that's and it was a cushion seat. Cushion seat warm with no toilet paper necessary. God. Mm-hmm. That's civilization. Yes, it is. That's, yes, it is. That's that, the apex. I yeah. used to think. I used to think the microwave was the best thing we've ever invented. <laughs> yeah, and I think that might be it. It's the. It's the. Yeah, they figured it out. Uh, so Barlow again. It says that the uh, the chamber pot was called a lot of things. It was called the thunder mug, <laughs> the slop jar, the peggy, the badger, or just the plain jug. Give me the jug. Uh, you know? <laughs> well, wait, no, not that one. <laughs> yeah, wow. so you want to make certain which drug they were given. Yeah, you. I love that. We all, we still do that today. We've got all yeah. kinds of names for it. Uh, and then the way you would get rid of most of your waste through the Middle Ages and Renaissance was you would just, <laughs> you would collect it overnight in a chamber pot. And then just throw it out the window in the yeah, morning. You see, that's why the dark ages happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's when you know yeah. that society's reversing. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Ugh. We went from flush toilets, 1400 BC, yeah. to just going in a bowl and throwing it out the window. Throw it out. In the oh, <laughs> God. And, and apparently in Paris, uh, in the Middle Ages and Renaissance, people would yell, garde l'eau, which means like, watch out for the water. Before they, before they threw it out there. Uh... Oh, it's like a golfer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, that then, just... then the French, but that made mm. them invent the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, bidet uh, or what? yeah, the bidet. Oh, which was, yeah, the... but <laughs> I mean, but that's to clean yourself afterwards. You're yeah. still like the, the garde low means you're, I, I'm going to throw it out the window. God, watch what? out. That's disgusting. And, and they think Jesus. that people, when they came back from being in Paris and they went back to England, they would say Garde, Gardi Lou, Gardi Lou. And they think that's where the term Lou came from. Lou. Interesting. Yeah. Because interesting. they were mispronouncing Garde Lou for uh, throwing their, their, <laughs> their chamber pots out the window. God. Uh, and then in the 1600s, people got the idea that they would uh, put the chamber pot underneath a piece of furniture, like a chair. And okay. so you could actually sit down there and it was called a close stool. And those are often, they say, uh, for kings and royalty and rich people, they also had padded seats. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how they're coming back to what the, what, you know, the yeah, Romans were yeah. doing uh, with the there, keyhole. There was a time, I think in the seventies when the padded toilet seat was kind of popular. Yes. It's a little odd, I think, yeah. the padded yeah. toilet seat. But, it, you know, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't need it, but I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. they, the, the worst thing was one that had gotten old. You know what I mean? You go yeah. in there, it just looked, it was uh-huh. discolored. And yeah. It didn't look right. Yeah. Time to get, head to the Home Depot. <laughs> Uh, and then the Palace of Versailles had uh, 274 of those closed stools Oof. in it. God. And uh, but lots of lords and ladies, when they came to to court, would bring their own uh, chamber pot. Really, like, I got to have my old jug. You know, I got to have my old. Interesting. Yeah, but they but they'd still use the chair with the hole in it. Yeah, you would stick it under. But they put their own pot underneath it. That's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> That's bizarre. Uh, Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, uh, supposedly would like hold court and, and, and attend to business while sitting on the toilet. No, yeah, God yeah. So damn it! <laughs> That's like Churchill uh, taking a bath. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, he always in the bath. Is it like that's awful? It's, it's like, like yeah, get it together. Yeah, we don't need come to come on. Come on. It's it's like a power move, I think. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, I'm dropping a turd right here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see your petition or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. 
Uh, and then in Castles, Haran says that there were little rooms that were built off, and you'll see them in like medieval castles, little rooms that were built off the side of the castle wall. And in that is where the privy was. So that okay. people would go in there off the edge of the <laughs> off the edge of the castle. And it would just drop down into the moat. Oh! They said the moat. <laughs> Well, that makes that sense. Yeah. You want to make it disgusting to get, yeah. Oh, right, right. God. Oh yeah. my God, that's. But can so you imagine gross. the smell? The smell oh. of the boats. They said, "Boy, it's awful, awful, awful." awful. Yeah. Uh, then in the 1500s, a guy named Sir John Harrington. He was a godson of Qu- Queen Elizabeth the First. He created the first toilet with working parts called the hmm. Ajax. The Ajax? Ajax. A-J-A-X. Huh. You see that name a lot, used a lot. I I think, doesn't it, isn't it Greek for like number one or something like that? Yeah. But it was number two. It was taking care of number two. (laughs) It makes no sense. Well, they think he called it the Ajax, which was a play on the term at that time. uh, A slang term for going to the bathroom was called the Jakes. Like I'm going out to the Jakes. And so they think he called it. The Ajax is a play on that. Everybody's creative during the Renaissance. <laughs> yeah, Everybody's the an artist. The Enlightenment. The yeah. Enlightenment, yeah. All right. Leonardo da Vinci had the uh, the Last Supper. Yeah. Sir, Sir John Harrington had the uh, the Ajax. Which, you know, if I had to pick one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which one has truly made our lives better? Yeah. You, know? you run out of uh, toilet hmm. paper long enough and you're going to use somebody's painting. <laughs> Uh, In 1775, Alexander Cummings, who was a watchmaker in London, he received the first patent for a water closet. So now, about 1775, we're getting into what we would recognize as a, a, as a modern toilet, I guess. That, God. Mm. Yeah. That's, I was just in Europe, water closet, water closet. Yeah. yeah. I like the water closet. I, you know, I th- that's okay. That's a good name. Bathroom is kind of weird because, you know, we're not yeah. taking baths. <laughs> yeah. If I've got to yeah. go to the bathroom, you're not going to take a bath. Right. You don't want people getting uh, mixed up about that you're while right. you're in there. But a water closet, I don't know. I kind of like it. What they call it in Germany and Vienna? Wasserklo? They call it the Wasserklo. Oh, they do? So, I don't know. Yeah. They all speak. Everybody speaks English. Really? Oh, man. man yeah. <clears throat> Everybody. Uh. In 1778, a guy named Joseph Brahma designed a hinge flap that allowed the contents of the bowl to empty and then seal afterwards. Uh Uh-huh. Just a thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, because the smell was so bad. If it was open, you know, no matter how nice your house was, if you didn't have that flap on there. Yeah. That's a genius right there. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. We could just put a thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Why are we sitting around smelling this all the yeah, time? We yeah, can, we've got the technology. It's just like a gate <laughs> on its side. <laughs> and they said that thanks to Brahma, uh, Haran says, we have the swirling action of water in the bowl, which helps clean out the contents. Uh, and that was due to the imp- improved flap system. Mm-hmm. So by doing that, then the water swirls around and it's supposed uh-huh. to clean out the bowl for you. Yeah, a little bit. Although, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dep- depends on the user, I guess. Yes, it does. Say. Yes, it does. And then Haran says we now get to the three musketeers of plumbing. Here we go. Them. Yeah. Here we go. George Jennings, Thomas Crapper, and Thomas Twyford. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, wow. So each of them tinkered with what Brahma had created with that flap. And it brought us up to where we are today. So George Jennings designed a siphonic or a, yeah, siphonic wash down closet that increased the pressure of the water entering the toilet bowl. Okay. So the, the tank on the back, it, 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 right? Or is that? Right, of, right. It, he created where it would go in there. It was more pressure. Yeah. Using gravity. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And the rush of the water emptied and cleaned the bowl better. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Thank God. <laughs> so, uh, what? And then Thomas Crapper, who actually <laughs> was a guy named Thomas Crapper, amazing, designed a pull chain that worked in conjunction with a valveless cistern 
that decreased the noise and preserved water. Interesting. So yeah, because it would just let enough to do it, yeah. and yeah. then come and and re reset so that it could recharge. Right, and it I would mean, be that's quiet. Genius. Yeah. It, it, they said uh, before that, like you had indoor plumbing with toilets and flush oil, but they said that <laughs> with, with like the Brahma and everything, everybody in the neighborhood knew when you had just gone to the bathroom because it was so loud. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And then Thomas Twyford, uh, he removed the wooden chair on the toilets. Mm. And uh, covered it all within a metal work. All the working parts were covered in a in a water closet, which we've mentioned before. Yeah. And then he put everything into porcelain. Yeah. So he's the guy who put it all into porcelain, which and then, is a genius move because it's yeah. slippery. Yeah, yeah, easier to clean, slipperier, <laughs> slipperier, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is slipperier. And uh, and the bulls, he designed them like works of art, like uh, lions, dolphins, Ooh, and flower motifs. Okay, I wouldn't yeah. mind having a lion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, apparently, troops, American troops that were stationed in Britain uh, during World War One, uh, when they came home, when they went to England, they would see that name Thomas Crapper Company. Mm-hmm. On the on the tanks above the the pole chain or above the pole toilets, and so that's where they brought back the term. I'm going to the crapper, where I got to go take a crap. That's amazing. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe that's true. I had heard that growing up. Somehow, I, I'd heard that it came from that. Some guy na- invented the toilet named Crapper. I don't know. Yeah, middle yeah. school. I don't know when I heard first heard that. But that's he, so he didn't, amazing that it's true. He, he didn't really invent it, but right, he right, he right, improved right. upon it. So yeah. I mean, it, it is partially true. Yeah, on that. it's amazing. Uh, so then, uh, just to kind of get to what did we use for toilet paper? Uh, that's a thing. Whole another team working <laughs> on that. I know, uh, I know the brain power. So in the 1300s, uh, the Chinese were producing a paper called Xiao Chi, uh, which could be used for wiping. Mm. Uh, but usually, you know, we talked about the Romans would use um, the sponge. A, a sponge on Jesus. a stick. Some uh-huh. people would use sand. People would use uh, pebbles, for example. Sand is stupid. I mean, just the idea of sand. why would I want sand up there? Yeah. I want sand as far away from that as right. possible. Right, right. It seems awful. It but I guess awful. if you got, you know, in a pinch, I don't know. You do what you can. I've heard of corn cobs. That's what they would use. They would use here <laughs> for like uh, our ancestors would use corn cobs. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, apparently you would want to soak them in water to get them soft. Uh huh. Okay. And then use them. But you would keep like a bin of corn cobs right, right. next to the. You know. I had heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, this, the Sears catalog. People would uh-huh. use be- before they became like waxy, you know, like, but you would have like the, all the old, uh, mail order catalogs. People would keep those out in the bathrooms. Yes. And, and then there's that scene in, uh, I've, I've started Ulysses several times and I always get about 500 pages in and then I get distracted. And Jesus, bored if you can't stuff. read it, nobody can. <laughs> but, but there's a scene where, uh, Leopold Bloom, the, the main character in Ulysses, uh, he's sitting out on the toilet and uh, or out on the outhouse out back behind his tenement. And he's reading the uh, newspaper while he's taking a like <laughs> while he's taking a crap. And that was kind of people thought that was obscene at the time that like in that book that he was so open about talking about people using the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to talk about it. We don't right. want we don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. Uh, and then in 1857, a guy named Joseph Gaetti uh, was the first person to market a product called Paper for the Water Closet. And uh, and then a guy named Seth Wheeler uh, in the 1800s or 1880s was the first guy uh, to experiment with toilet paper on a roll. Mm, way to go, Seth. <laughs> yeah. Way to go. 
Yeah, and then the what it must uh, be like to invent something basic like that that just oh. la- stands the test of time. I mean, it's just yeah. so interesting. We're still you know? using it. The, yeah, the it's like the paper cardboard clip tube. or the, yeah. just those inventions that are just yep, that'll yeah. do it. Yeah, <laughs> done and done <laughs> and solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the Scott Paper Company in 1874, they were the first ones to like really start marketing really like, toilet paper. Like Scott. they would buy, just take big uh, reams of paper and cut it down for, uh, you know, I for toilet paper. Scott, I'll, I'll, you know, it's <laughs> it's like it, I, I'm, I'm with it. I, I mean, I don't know what kind of toilet paper you prefer. But I don't want something too pillowy or soft that's, you know. Really? Be, really? Well, you could get into clog problems. It just yeah, seems like yeah. an overdue. I want, and I don't want something that's, you know, not, you know, absorbent at all. So I want to find that Goldilocks, yeah. uh, you know, and I, <laughs> I feel like uh, Scott, it, it does that. Because you want, really? you also want rolls that have a lot in the last yeah. a while yeah. you don't want to be rifling through rolls right right but but still uh, we should all have the wand we should all have the wand have you noticed that they've started making the the toilet paper like narrower yes. like the roll is narrower yes it is that yeah. is absolutely true i'm sure it's for shipping somehow I don't know. i'm but, sure they're saving money on it somehow yeah, somehow the corporation Yep. You know, it's like, give me a break. Shave an eighth of an inch off that thing (laughs) over a 10 year period will net $200 million. Yeah. Done. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And so, John, just uh, one last thing I want to talk about was the rise of public restrooms in the 19th and 20th, uh, like late 19th and early 20th centuries. And before that time, before public restrooms came into into play most people would just just pee out in the streets yeah well they still do in la (laughs) Um. (laughs) uh there was a guy in scotland i read about who he would walk around with a jug and then he had a big cape i mean this was back in the 17 1800s and uh you could pay him if you had to go and then he would use the cape to kind of shield you and you would go in his jug. Wow. <laughs> so. Wow. That's enterprising. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, Peter Baldwin, uh, in his article called Restrooms in American Cities, 1869 to 1932, says that there was a progressive movement in the early 1900s uh, to build public urinals, comfort stations, and uh, they were meant to be an alternative to people going into saloons. Hmm. So, so before all the public restrooms, you'd either go out in the street or if you were working downtown, the only place you could go to, if you were a man, the only place you could go to use the bathroom would be to go into a saloon. And that's like, you know, b- back then, if you think it's hard working in a Starbucks and everybody's coming in, to use the bathroom, <laughs> imagine working on a saloon. Yeah. yeah. Just like the whole town. Yeah, wow. and they they said that uh, they thought the fact that there weren't public restrooms was one of the reasons why their alcoholism was so. So it's like or, a temperance thing, kind of. Kind like, of, yeah. Wow. So they were like, "Hey, we're going to build public restrooms so that people don't won't go into saloon. That'll right. decrease drinking." Right, because they always thought it, it. The you know that progressive movement at that time or the city beautiful movement was like the inner person. You, you take care of the outer person to take care of the inner moral person. Oh, I like so that. if you, if you make them better, create a better environment, then the person inside would be better. I believe so. that. And at that time, <laughs> everybody was just filthy and disgusting. It was like, oh, yeah. come on. Let's yeah. Take it up a notch, everybody. Yeah. And for women, it was harder because think about what you were wearing, oh, for example. Can't imagine. And you you would either go to a saloon, but mo- normally, like most middle class or upper class women, would try to go to a hotel to use mm-hmm. the bathroom, mm-hmm. or they would try to go to a department store. Department mm-hmm. stores would have bathrooms for them. And and what they say is that uh, you, I've read an article where they were talking about that some people think that the idea that you limited 
women's restrooms because there were much more men's restrooms Mm -hmm. in downtown areas than women's restrooms was a way to keep women out of public life at that time. Interesting. Wow. So you limit the bathroom and people can't get in there to, because if you you can't go to the bathroom, why would you go down like in the loop in Chicago or something like that? Right. You stay at home where you belong. There's a bathroom there. Right. And we're just going to make it uncomfortable for you. Yeah. And, uh, and then also what people say, this is like when, um, like disabled people now, like if you have inaccessible toilets right, in certain areas, then you're, you know, essentially excluding people from being able to participate in society by making yeah. it impossible for them to go out in public in certain areas. Right, right. They yeah. have to think about things in a way, in a much different way than, than we do. Right, And right. that makes uh, it, doubly hard for them. Yeah. You have yeah. to plan out where you're going. Like, yeah. can I actually even use the bathroom? Right. Um, Jesus. so again, when, you know, and, uh, I read an article where the authors of it, 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 they describe this as being landscapes of exclusion, meaning mm-hmm. you limit the toilets, you're excluding certain people from mm-hmm. participating in society. And and I just found it interesting with the whole transgender argument right. that we have about bathrooms right now, where you have to use the the bathroom that's you know to to the sex that you were born with, mm-hmm. and and it's uncomfortable because whether you know it's not about safety because anybody that thinks that you know a sign on the door is going to keep out a sexual predator, you know, right. I, but but the thing is, if you make it uncomfortable for certain people to be able to use the restroom in safety or, you know, just just to be able to use the restroom, you're essentially taking them out of marginalize them even more. Right. And and they can't participate in in society in certain areas. Right. Right. They're not going to go to a sporting event. They're not going to go to a restaurant. They're mm. not going to go shopping. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in in Europe, uh, I was in in Berlin. Lot of multi sex bathrooms. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for it. I had yeah, a chat I, with a young woman while we were both washing our hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the way it was when I went to school in France. It was yeah. a shared bathroom. Yeah, and there was nothing. I mean, you just get used to it. You yeah. know what I mean? You just yeah. get used to it. Yeah, I agree. So. I saw a bathroom in San Francisco, this was a few years ago, that was a full self-cleaning bathroom. So you would use the bathroom for free, yeah. and it was just yeah. out in the city, and then you would close the door and it would lock for a second, <laughs> and you'd hear all this yeah, 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 happening, and then the next person would open up, it'd be totally... Like everything cleaned, like the walls yeah. and every, it was just like this crazy machine. Yeah. I, they had those in France when I, when I was going to school in France and I was really drunk one time and a friend of mine and I over there were like, we got to find out what's going on in there. So I held myself up <laughs> on the walls and it's fascinating. Like the whole floor comes up and it cleans itself, like the whole bowl and the floor and everything. everything. I, yeah. I could that, have had my my legs yanked off by the hydraulics on that thing. It was, it's incredible. Been, and then I, yeah. you know, I told you about at the top of our show uh, about the toilet seat that just rotated. <laughs> it had a little arm on it, and it rotated, and the arm must have, wow, you know, sprayed something on it. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. All right, how about on a plane? You ever poop on the plane? Oh, no, I mean unless it's. No, I mean, la- I mean, I, you know, if it's an emergency, of course, but never, never. And I don't yeah. understand the person yeah. who poops on the plane before we even take off. <laughs> what, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Then, and that's, you know, and then all the people who are around it are just looking at each other like, my God. Yeah, we haven't even left. <laughs> we haven't, we even, haven't left. even wheels are still down. <laughs> and we got a guy who couldn't yeah. do, couldn't get his yeah. act together. 
Yeah. Come on, never. No. Po only poops on a plane should be because of an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. You should somehow have to prove that. <laughs> doctor's <laughs> card. You have yeah. to have a doctor's card. <laughs> All right, John. Well, I think we've we've gone on a journey, an amazing yeah, journey. Say, you've taken us on a wonderful <laughs> journey. From the mouth to the anus. Yes. It's the uh, Lord of the Rings of the yeah. digestive tract. The alpha to the omega. You you <laughs> have taken. And you know what? I, I this is probably one of our most uh, core episodes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to asterisk it in some way. Like, we should have certain yeah. episodes where you just must hear. Yeah. And this I've, is a core learning curriculum. Here. Yeah. This one, you can't be a human. You can't yeah. call yourself an anthropologist and not understand poo. Yeah. That's just, essential. That's essential. The fact. It's the fact. Yeah. Walking upright, pooing yeah. in a jug, and throwing it out the window. That's who we are. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly who we are. Uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Well, this is uh, John Lear, human number two, signing off. And this is human number one, John McCrae. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast and found it interesting, please tell a friend. And don't forget to check out our Facebook and Instagram pages for additional information about the topics. And remember, if you have a topic you feel humanity should know about, yes. send it in to us. Yeah. And uh, we've we've had some people send in yes, things to have. us. Yes, we have. Our our listeners are they, they're great, great source. Yeah. 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 So we will try to answer those questions for you. But anyway, thanks everybody. Thanks, John. Thank you. Love ya. I'll see. Love you, you guys. Soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.